Hello and welcome to this special broadcast from Union Solidarity International on the anniversary of the Rana Plaza disaster in Bangladesh. My name is Walton Pantland, I'm in Glasgow, Scotland and I'm speaking to Yirki Reiner, General Secretary of Industrial Global Union. Yirki, thank you for joining us and uh, on the anniversary of this terrible industrial accident, can you tell us what the situation is and, and what, what has been achieved in the past year? Well, obviously, this uh, Rana Plaza industrial homicide on the 24th of April 2013, as we call it, left uh, 1,100 mostly young workers, men and women, dead and more than 2,000 injured. In industrial initiated negotiations with the brands to set up a, a what is now called the Rana Plaza Trust Fund. It's administered by the International Labour Organization, ILO. The good news is that the first compensations have already been paid out to the workers and to the victims' families. But the bad news is that we have only about 15 million paid into the trust fund by the brands when the long-term need is 40 million. So we are urging all those brands that were producing at Tarana Plaza to pay into the fund as a matter of urgency, but not only those. We are asking all the brands and retailers who have been working in Bangladesh to contribute because they have a shared responsibility of this profoundly unresponsible uh, production model, hazardous model that we are now about to change. Industry all together with, with Uni initiated negotiations on the Accord on Fire and Building Safety in Bangladesh. It's a legally binding agreement which has now been signed by 166 brands, covering almost 2,000 factories and 2 million workers. This agreement uh, talks about extensive inspections that will be carried out uh, by the end of September this year on all these factories and uh, remediation, which means repairing the dangerous uh, conditions. So we are about to produce the change, but before that, the brands had to pay compensation to the victims. Thank you, Yerki. This uh, Bangladesh Fire and Safety Accord sounds like a tremendous victory for the international trade union movement and a major step forward. Does this mean that things are fundamentally different in Bangladesh now or are there more obstacles? Is there more that still needs to be done? Things have started to change, but uh, this project, uh, uh, the Accord, is about, about making these uh, 4,000 factories that employ uh, millions of workers safe and sustainable. But part of the problem is that the workers still earn poverty wages in the garment industry. Still a year ago, the minimum wage was only $37 a month. After tough negotiations and mobilizations by the workers in Bangladesh, the government agreed last November to a 77% increase, so the new minimum wage is $67 a month. It's still very, very low and very far away from a living wage, but it's a first step. So any new revisions must continue and the brands and retailers must pay more to the factory owners to guarantee a living wage. And finally, only a year ago, the garment industry in Bangladesh was almost a union-free zone because of opposition from the factory owners and the government. Thanks to pressure, this has changed. And the good news is that during the past 12 months, industry all affiliated unions in Bangladesh have organized more than 40,000 workers in 120 garment factories, and we want to triple that figure this year. There cannot be a safety culture, a good working culture in factories without an organized workforce. Yeah, it sounds to me that that is indeed the key. We can sign whatever accords uh, we like at international level, but it takes grassroots organizing on the ground, uh, workers organized into trade unions that are able to represent them to make a real fundamental difference. So it's very encouraging to hear that, that this is happening and that, that uh, global, global trade unionism is becoming something real and tangible on the ground in, in Bangladesh. Um, Yurki, you're General Secretary of uh, the Global Union Industrial, and it's an organization that some people still may not have heard of. It's a, it's a relatively new organization. You've only been in existence for a few years, um, formed as a merger of uh, a number of other global unions. Can you tell us a little bit about Industrial and uh, what your strategy is over the next coming years? What are you trying to do in, in the world of work? Industrial Global Union was created 
in data in 2012 as a result of the merger. And Industrial now represents 50 million workers in energy mining and manufacturing in 140 countries. The creation of Industrial meant launching a new era of global solidarity. We are focusing on building union power through organizing growth, defending workers' rights which are under attack, building a counterpower to global capital, and above all, being political actors. We are mobilizing people around the world to fight for, for an economic and social model that puts people first. In a world where 80% of the population still lacks proper health insurance and pensions, and where 40% of the world population lives on less than $2 a day, and 7% only are organized in unions, these have to be our priorities. Yuki Reiner, General Secretary of Industrial Global Union, thank you for joining us today on the anniversary of the industrial homicide at Rana Plaza. Thank you, Walter.